Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from Holsinger's Fly Shop, bringing you another time video this week. Hey, it's summertime here. Well, it's beginning of summer. It's about to be July. Um, right now, the cicadas here in our area are happening. If you're in my area in central Pennsylvania, you're lucky. Get out and have fun with the cicadas. They're not going to be here much longer. Um, but the next thing that's going to be around the bend is the Japanese beetles, which usually happen July 4th in my area. And uh, I usually do real well on them, so I'm going to transition from cicadas to Japanese beetles. One of my favorite things to do with the Japanese beetle is put an ant pattern underneath it and do dry dropper with an ant under a beetle. I usually do real well. So ants are going to be coming along too. I've done a couple ant patterns. Probably going to do another one here for you, like a competition style ant with the tungsten bead on it soon. Um, I want to get out and fish that a little, but I'm bringing you this one. This one's a floating ant. We, you know, there's ants everywhere. They constantly are getting brushed and pushed into the water, you know, falling off of trees, falling into the water. So it's a staple of a trout's diet in the summertime, and it's a great pattern. What I'm going to show you today is a floating one. I'm sure you're going to like it. It's really easy to tie, and it's going to catch a fish. Uh, you know, I love top water right now is hot on the trout but do it in the morning guys you know get out there if you're gonna fish for trout fish in the mornings the late evenings and uh, don't tr stress the trout out make sure the water temps are down and at a safe level so here you go guys here you're gonna see a picture of the fly and then the material list to tie it Okay, here we see the foam man and the vise. Let's get into tying it. It's really actually pretty simple. For a hook, I'm going to start out with a fire hole 419. This is a size 16 hook. Um, it's just a nice size to tie. It's small enough yet big enough that, that it's easy to tie. You can tie it a little smaller if you want to. It's just hard to fit it all on the hook. So we're going to start our thread on there like we do every other fly. Wrap it back to the bend of the hook. And then I'm going to take a piece of foam. Okay, the foam I'm using is black foam. This is 3 millimeter. Um, we carry it in the fly shop here. You can probably find it at the local craft store. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a slice of it about 3 eighths of an inch wide. Not about the width of your hook gap there. Not much more than that. And then I'm going to tie it down back here at the back of the hook. And I'm using 12 watt nano silk black thread. That nano silk will cut through the foam if you pull it too tight when you start. So you kind of got to do some loose wraps before you put some tight wraps down there. And I do not want to go m more than halfway with that foam. You can see there I'm about halfway. But I'm just going to get that wrap down and then I'm going to come up about a third of the way. And I'm going to fold the foam over. And then I'm just going to make two or three loose wraps. So we're going to make the butt section of the fly there. You can see it's pretty easy. Then I'm going to come up another third. And I'm going to make the middle section of the ant. And I just want to hold it in place. Make a couple looser wraps. Come up to the eye. And we're going to make the head. Okay, once we get the head on there, so I got three nice sections there. Then I'm just going to take and pull that and trim it off. And I'm going to wrap that head down. And then I'm just going to come back through to my back, my back section here. Now I'm going to take a piece of black flex floss and I'm going to cut a section of it about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter long. And these are going to be my legs. And I'm going to tie it in right on the side of the foam. And do like one or two wraps. And then I'm going to do one on the other side. Like I said, this is a very simple floating ant. And uh, we're just going to tie it in on the other side. Two or three wraps there. Just to get it into place where I want it. So it's level. Then I'm going to come up to the next section. Bring my thread into the head 
section there and I'm going to fold this um, flex floss in half so I'm making all of my legs out of one piece of flex floss on each side so do it again we're going to fold it in half on this side tie that in place all right, get a couple nice wraps, and then I'm going to come up here and whip finish my head off. Soon, oh, there, there we go. Couldn't find my whip finish laying on the table. So we're going to whip finish the head off on that. I'm going to put one more on there. Okay, now I'm going to spin this around so you see those legs. Okay, you see how there's a loop here in each leg. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull on this and I'm going to cut the front side of the loop so I have back legs I'll do the same on the other side so that way I in essence have two back legs and one front leg and then I'm just going to come in and I'm going to pull on these and trim them to length just get them where I want them I don't want them too long but I just want a little bit of appendages there um, so they stick out and help it float a little bit better and then you can tweak them to get them to lay even and on the side but that's all that's to this nice little simple foam ant this side's a little longer so I'm going to trim them down there we go a little bit more equal on the legs there easy ant to tie alright guys I hope you like that fly like I said it was a really simple pattern Real easy to tie and it catches fish. You know, floating ant does real well in the summertime. Um, if you want, you could put a little bit of like antron or something on top of this. Give a little bit of a cider so you can see it a little bit better. That'll help, but you can't go real big because, um, you know, there's, this isn't a big fly. It's tied on a size 16. I would tie it on the back two sections of the fly if you're going to add just a little bit of antron for Keller. Um, mainly I just cast and uh, watch where my cast goes and have a general idea where the fly should be if I can't see it. If I see a rise in that area, set the hook on it. So, you know, if you can't see the fly and you see a rise, set the hook. There's nothing to lose but a missed fish. So, anyway guys, have fun. Tie a bunch of these up. Get out there. Hit the water. Uh, it'll work great on ponds for sunfish and stuff like that too. If you know, if you want to go play around and just catch sunnies, that's a lot of fun too. So have fun tying, guys. That's what it's all about. If you need any of the materials, you can find it at our shop at holsingersflyshop.com. And until next week, when I bring you another video, please take the time to subscribe if you haven't already and like the video. It helps bump them up. Until then, I'm Sean Holsinger.